Hello. Let's get going tonight with Leviticus. I personally really like Leviticus. It's got some very practical things in it that you're going to recognize that we still adhere to today, uh, even though this is probably 4,000 years ago. First, I want to dedicate this reading to the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, you're so worthy, and I ask that you soften hearts tonight so that those who listen understand that even though some of this is, I don't know, some of it's just not appetizing with the slaughtering of the animals, but Father, that you would speak to people's hearts tonight, Father, that they would desire to know who you are. And I pray a blessing on all those that come to listen in your holy name, Father. And I pray with everybody now that you will make a way for the videos to continue going up um, without Facebook interfering. Because the only thing I can figure out in two days of trying everything and taking the phone to the phone store is that Facebook has done something to the videos. Which makes sense because Facebook has done things to me before. And... Um, I don't know, it might just be some weird person who decided that they would play with the videos. I, I don't know. Father, we just pray right now that you make a way through, Father, and that you open the door so that everybody can hear the gospel. And those that don't want to hear it, move them on, Father, so that they're not subject to hearing your word, that they don't ever have to hear what they don't want to hear. In the meantime, Father, I ask that you draw hearts, Father, soften them, open them, and we thank you in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. All right, so let's start with Leviticus. Now, you can remember Leviticus because it's a book of laws, okay? L for Leviticus, laws with an L. Just realize that's what it is, okay? Genesis was the story of creation. Exodus was the story of Moses leaving uh, uh, leading the people out of Egypt, and Leviticus is a book of laws. Numbers will be the census, and Deuteronomy, I believe, are more laws, but I can't quite remember, so don't quote me. But those five books, or I should say these five books, are what Orthodox Jews live by. That's their Bible. That's their Talmud. They don't pay attention to Jeremiah and Isaiah and all the prophets, okay? If anything, Jesus said they killed the prophets, but they do revere the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. They revere them. This is their Bible, and it's holy to them, and we respect that, okay? Even still, though, we do see Jesus woven in and out of the Talmud, of these five books. We see prophecy of him, okay? Right now, the Jews, their eyes are closed. They can't see that, all right? And that's okay, some Jews have seen it, and we call them Messianic Jews. They have found their, their Savior in Jesus Christ. But there will be a time where the eyes of all the Jews will be open. The reason their eyes are closed en masse, like most of them, is so that we can get in, okay? What they didn't receive... God turned and gave to us. We were the beggars on the highways and the byways because we were those pagan tribes that were out there slaughtering our children, slaughtering human beings. I read in my book that the Irish were eating people. That, but you know, so was so was so were other people. Okay, but you know, I'm sitting here kind of squirming, going, "Oh, I've got Irish in me." Well, they were eating people, according to Julius Caesar. He said the the people, the Irish, they eat people. I don't know, we're talking thousands of years ago because this was even before Christ, okay? That Julius is, is writing this, all right? What I'm reading. So um, the Gentiles were those pagan tribes that were not chosen by God to be the priests and prophets to the world. That was what was the Jews were given. But when the Jews shut their eyes and turned their backs on Jesus, God shut those eyes for a time, made sure they stayed shut, and turned around and gave the gospel to us. And we were hungry for it because we were so evil, okay? And this is not to say that the Jews weren't evil in their time, too. They were, okay? We all need Jesus. But what I'm saying is many of the tribes, many of your Native Americans 
uh, just grab the gospel when they heard it, okay? I mean, you can find many, many Christian Native Americans, groups of Native Americans who are Christians. Now, of course, they were much later. We're talking about really ancient times here. But, you know, uh, the pagan tribes were so desperately evil that many of us just ate it up, okay? In terms of, <laughs> I don't mean to say ate it up when we're talking about Irish people eating people. But, um, you know, we, we were grateful for it. We received it with joy, okay? And someday the Jews will too, okay? Not all of them, but enough of them, okay? I mean, we know for sure there's 144,000 of them were, that are going to be specially chosen by the Lord, okay? Now, the Lord doesn't love the Jews more than anybody else. They were just the ones that were picked to do a job of being the priests and prophets to the world, and they didn't, you know, and that's the thing. If the Lord asks us to do a job and we refuse to do it or we rebel or we don't do it, he'll go somewhere else, okay? He, he's not dependent on us, all right, in that way, okay? So let's get going with Leviticus, which is a book I really like. And it'll start out talking about burnt offerings. Bite your tongue on some of it because some of it's gross. But just remember, the times are ancient. They didn't have butcheries, you know, places to cleanly butcher meat and prepare it. This is just what it is, okay? And it's very sad to think that blood has to be shed from these animals to cover and atone for our sin. But all the way back in the garden, we saw animals slaughtered to make skins to hide Adam and Eve's naked bodies. Okay, it's very sad, but because life courses through the blood of a being, it's a life for a life in a sense. Okay, now we don't have to slaughter animals anymore because Jesus said it's finished. Meaning no more slaughtering. I just died on a cross for you. No more. I am the ultimate sacrifice, okay? So if you have Jesus as your sacrifice, you're good to go, okay? Just remember, obeying the Lord is the responsibility you have when you hold that sacrifice to offer it to the Lord, okay? We do have responsibility when we are Christians, okay? So let's get going with Leviticus here. The Lord called to Moses and spoke to him from the tent of meeting. He said, speak to the Israelites and say to them, when anyone among you brings an offering to the Lord, bring as your offering an animal from either the herd or the flock. Uh, speak to the Israelites. Okay. Uh, if the offering is a burnt offering from the herd, you're to offer a male without defect. Okay. So no blind animals, no animal that has a cyst or a boil, no lame animal, none of that. Okay. You must present it at the entrance of the tent of meeting so that it will be acceptable to the Lord. You're to lay your hand on the head of the burnt offering and it will be accepted on your behalf to make atonement for you. You are to slaughter the young bull before the Lord and then Aaron's sons, the priests, shall bring the blood and splash it against the sides of the altar at the entrance to the tent of meeting. You're to skin the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. The sons of Aaron, the priests, are to put fire on the altar and arrange wood on the fire. Then Aaron's sons, the priests, shall arrange the pieces, including the head and the fat, on the wood that's burning on the altar. You are to wash the internal organs and the legs with water, and the priest is to burn all of it on the altar. It's a burnt offering, a food offering, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. And I mentioned this before, you know, when you cook a wonderful chicken in the oven and it's all spiced up and prepared, and after you've served it and eaten it, the smell is in the house for a while and it smells so inviting. Well, this is what the Lord is talking about, okay? Because it's all about inviting the Lord into, into our presence, okay? Because we have to make place for him, all right? And you're going to see this in the fellowship offerings, etc., etc., okay? It's about making a place where the Lord can be with us, can enter with us, making it welcoming, okay? And holy, because he's holy. He's not like us. He's not a mere mortal, okay? If the offering is a burnt offering from the flock, from either the sheep or the goats, you're to offer a male without defect. You're to slaughter it at the north side of the altar before the Lord. And Aaron's sons, the priest, shall splash his blood against the sides of the altar. You're to cut it into pieces, and the priest shall arrange them, including the head and fat, the fat, 
on the wood that's burning on the altar. You're to wash the internal organs and the legs with water, and the priest is to bring all of them and burn them on the altar. It's a burnt offering, a food offering, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. You know, I'm thinking they, they wash the legs because that's where, you know, urine could be when an animal is alive and walking about and peeing on the ground, you know. So everything is being prepared to be perfect, okay? So the legs are washed as well as the internal organs for whatever reason. I'm also having the feeling that each internal organ probably represents something, all right? I don't know what, but with the Lord, everything sort of means something, all right? But but I'm not inviting you to start getting... Uh, uh, um, curious in a way that's not pleasing to the Lord, okay? We just, we accept what he tells us, okay? The rest we don't need to know. Um, if the offering to the Lord is a burnt offering of birds, you are to offer a dove or a young pigeon. The priest shall bring it to the altar, wring its head off, uh, ring off the head and burn it on the altar. Its blood shall be drained out on the side of the altar. He's to remove the crop and the feathers and throw them down east of the altar where the ashes are. The crop is somewhere in the beak uh, or under the beak. He shall tear it open by the wings, not dividing it completely. And then the priest shall burn it on the wood that's burning on the altar. It's a burnt offering, a food offering, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. Leviticus 2. When anyone brings a grain offering to the Lord, their offering is to be of the finest flour. They're to pour olive oil on it, put incense on it, and take it to Aaron's sons, the priests. The priest shall take a handful of the flour and oil together with all the incense and burn this as a memorial portion on the altar, a food offering, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. The rest of the grain offering belongs to Aaron and his sons. It is most, a most holy part of the food offerings presented to the Lord. If you bring a grain offering baked in an oven, it's con, it is to consist of the finest flour, either thick loaves made without yeast and with olive oil mixed in, or thin loaves made without yeast and brushed with olive oil. If your grain offering is prepared on a griddle, it's to be made of the finest flour mixed with oil and without yeast. Crumble it and pour oil on it. It's a grain offering. If your grain offering is cooked in a pan, it's to be made of the finest flour and some olive oil. Bring the grain offering made of these things to the Lord. Present it to the priest who shall take it to the altar. He shall take out the memorial portion from the grain offering and burn it on the altar as a food offering, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. The rest of the grain offering belongs to Aaron and his sons. It's a most holy part of the food offerings presented to the Lord. So this is how the priests are paid. They are given a portion of everything that is given whether it be bronze, silver, gold, lamb, bull, or goat, or bird, okay? That's how they live. That's their wage, okay? Every grain, I don't know that it's a wage, but that's how they get paid for what they do, okay? Every grain offering you bring to the Lord must be made without yeast, for you're not to burn any yeast or honey in a food offering presented to the Lord. You may bring them to the Lord as an offering of the first fruits, but they are not to be offered on the altar as a pleasing aroma. Season all your grain offerings with salt. Don't leave the salt of the covenant of your God out of your grain offerings. Add salt to all your offerings. If you bring a grain offering of first fruits to the Lord, offer crushed heads of new grain roasted in the fire. Put oil and incense on it. It's a grain offering. The priest shall burn the memorial portion of the crushed grain and the oil together with all the incense as a food offering presented to the Lord. Leviticus 3. If your offering is a fellowship offering and you offer an animal from the herd, whether male or female, you are to present before the Lord an animal without defect. You're to lay your hand on the head of your offering and slaughter it at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Then Aaron's sons, the priests, shall splash the blood against the sides of the altar. From the fellowship offering, you're to bring a food offering to the Lord, the internal organs and all the fat that is connected to them, both kidneys with the fat on them near the loins and the long lobe of the liver, which you'll remove with the kidneys. 
Then Aaron's sons are to burn it on the altar on top of the burnt offering that's lying on the burning wood. It's a food offering, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. If you offer an animal from the flock as a fellowship offering to the Lord, you are to offer a male or female without defect. If you offer a lamb, you're to present it before the Lord. Lay your hand on its head, slaughter it in front of the tent of meeting. Then Aaron's sons shall splash its blood against the sides of the altar. From the fellowship offering, you're to bring a food offering to the Lord. It's fat. The entire fat tail cut off close to the backbone, the internal organs and all the fat that's connected to them, both kidneys with the fat on them near the loins and the long lobe of the liver, which you will remove with the kidneys. The priest shall burn them on the altar as a food offering presented to the Lord. If your offering is a goat, you are to present it before the Lord, lay your hand on its head and slaughter it in front of the tent of meeting. Then Aaron's sons shall splash its blood against the sides of the altar. From what you offer, you're to present this food offering to the Lord, the internal organs and all the fat that's connected to them, both kidneys with the fat on them near the loins and the long lobe of the liver, which you will remove with the kidneys. The priest shall burn them on the altar as a food offering, a pleasing aroma. All the fat is the Lord's. Now, fat connotates a few different things in the Bible, um, we'll, we'll notice them as we see them. This is a lasting ordinance for the generations to come wherever you live. You must not eat any fat or any blood, okay? You know, fat sometimes is used to speak of pride, but sometimes it's used to speak of wealth or, you know, uh, a sort of a richness, a rich life, okay? Leviticus 4, the Lord said to Moses, say to the Israelites, when anyone sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, if the anointed priest sins, bringing guilt on the people, he must bring to the Lord a young bull without defect as a sin offering. For the sin he has committed, he is to present the bull at the entrance to the tent of meeting before the Lord. He is to lay his hand on his head and slaughter it before the Lord. Then the anointed priest shall take some of the bull's blood and carry it into the tent of meeting. He is to dip his finger into the blood and sprinkle some of it seven times before the Lord in front of the curtain of the sanctuary. The priest shall then put some of the blood on the horns of the altar, a fragrant incense that is before the Lord in the tent of meeting. And you remember those are bull's horns. They're not literal bull's horns, but they're uh, designed to be look like bull's horns on each of the four corners of the altar going downwards, not upwards, okay? The rest of the bull's blood he shall pour out at the base of the altar of burnt offering at the entrance to the tent of meeting. <coughs> Excuse me. He shall remove all the fat from the bull of the sin offering, all the fat that's connected to the internal offering uh, organs, both kidneys with the fat on them near the loins and the long lobe of the liver, which he'll remove with the kidneys, just as the fat is removed from the ox sacrificed as a fellowship offering. Then the priest shall burn them on the altar of burnt offering, but the hide of the bull and all its flesh, as well as the head and legs, the internal organs and the intestines, that is all the rest of the bull, he must take outside the camp to a place ceremonially clean where the ashes are thrown and burn it there in a wood fire on the ash heap. If the, that's if a priest sins, okay? Once again, blood being used to atone for sin. If the whole Israelite community sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, even though the community is unaware of the matter, when they realize their guilt and the sin they committed becomes known, the assembly must bring a young bull as a sin offering and present it before the tent of meeting. The elders of the community are to lay their hands on the bull's head before the Lord and the bull shall be slaughtered before the Lord. Then the anointed priest is to take some of the bull's blood into the tent of meeting. He shall dip his finger into the blood and sprinkle it before the Lord seven times in front of the curtain. Now the curtain would be the curtain in front of the Ark of the Covenant, which is the most holy place, okay? Only the priest can go in there. I think they go once a year or something. Uh, and we'll read it. 
He is to put some of the blood on the horns of the altar that's before the Lord in the tent of meeting. The rest of the blood he'll pour out at the base of the altar of burnt offering at the entrance to the tent of meeting. He shall remove all the fat from it and burn it on the altar and do with this bull just as he did with the bull for the sin offering. In this way, the priest will make atonement for the community and they will be forgiven. Then he shall take the bull outside the camp and burn it as he burned the first bull. This is the sin offering for the community. When a leader sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the commands of the Lord his God, when he realizes his guilt and the sin he's committed becomes known, he must bring as his offering a male goat without defect. He's to lay his hand on the goat's head and slaughter it at the place where the burnt offering uh, is slaughtered before the Lord. It's a sin offering. Then the priest shall take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering and pour out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. He shall burn all the fat on the altar as he burned the fat of the fellowship offering. In this way, the priest will make atonement for the leader's sin and he will be forgiven. In, if any member of the community sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, when they realize their guilt and the sin they've committed becomes known, they must bring as their offering for the sin they committed a female goat without defect. They're to lay their hand on the head of the sin offering and slaughter it at the place of the burnt offering. Then the priest is to take some of the blood with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering and pour out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. They shall remove all the fat, just as the fat is removed from the fellowship offering, and the priest shall burn it on the altar as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. In this way, the priest will make atonement for them and they will be forgiven. If someone brings a lamb as their sin offering, they're to bring a female without defect. They're to lay their hand on its head and slaughter it for a sin offering at the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered. Then the priest shall take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering and pour out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. So you're getting the picture now of how this goes. It's brought to the tent of meeting. It's slaughtered. The blood is, is sprinkled around the, or poured out at the base, okay? And then the meat is prepared and whatever the Lord wants as an aroma is put on the altar. And in some cases, the hide and everything else, at least of those bulls, will be burnt outside the camp. So with this female lamb, they shall remove all the fat, just as the fat is removed from the lamb of the fellowship offering, and the priest shall burn it on the altar on top of the food offerings presented to the Lord. In this way, the priest will make atonement for them for the sin they've committed, and they will be forgiven. Once again, these are the terrible penalties that, uh, they, that these animals pay uh, for our sin. Okay, it's it's very sad. All right, Leviticus 5, and this will be the end. If anyone sins because they don't speak up when they hear a public charge to testify regarding something they've seen or learned about, they will be held responsible. So if you don't speak up when you've seen something bad, you're going to be held responsible. If anyone becomes aware that they're guilty, if they unwittingly touch anything ceremonially unclean, whether the carcass of an unclean animal, wild or domestic, or of any unclean creature that moves along the ground, and they're unaware that they've become unclean, but then they come to realize their guilt, or if they touch human uncleanness, anything that would make them unclean, even though they're unaware of it, but then they learn of it and realize their guilt, or if anyone thoughtlessly takes an oath to do anything, whether good or evil, in any matter one might carelessly swear about, like I swear I'm going to climb Mount Everest, bad, bad vow. Autumn, don't say that, okay? Don't say something that you may not be able to carry out, okay? We're going to hear more about it. Um, when anyone becomes aware that they're guilty in any of these matters, they must confess in what way they've sinned. As a penalty for the sin they've committed, they must bring to the Lord a female lamb or goat from the flock as a sin offering, and the priest shall make atonement for them for their sin. Anyone who can't afford a lamb is to bring two doves or two young pigeons to the Lord as a penalty for their sin, one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. 
They are to bring them to the priest who shall first offer the one for the sin offering. He's to wring its head from its neck, not dividing it completely, and is to splash some of the blood of the sin offering against the side of the altar. The rest of the blood must be drained out at the base of the altar. It's a sin offering. The priest shall then offer the other as burnt, a burnt offering in the prescribed way and make atonement for them for the sin they've committed and they will be forgiven. You know, I'm sitting here being rather grossed out, but when I think about it, since sacrifice goes on all over the world, this is probably the least disgusting of some of the sacrifices that go on today. Because sacrificing has never stopped, whether it's satanic or I can only think it would be satanic. But, you know, I suppose ringing a bird's neck is mild compared to some of the rituals that probably go on behind closed doors. I don't know. <clears throat> All of it is kind of a bastardization of the holiness of, of what the Jews are doing to have their sin atoned for, okay? All right, so here we go. If, however, they cannot afford two doves or two young pigeons, they're to bring as an offering for their sin a tenth of an ephah of the finest flour for a sin offering. They must not put olive oil or incense on it because it's a sin offering. They are to bring it to the priest who shall take a handful of it as a memorial portion and burn it on the altar on top of the food offerings presented to the Lord. It's a sin offering, and this way the priest will make atonement for them for any of these sins they've committed, and they'll be forgiven. The rest of the offering will belong to the priest, as in the case of the grain offering. The Lord said to Moses, when anyone is unfaithful to the Lord by sinning unintentionally in regard to any of the Lord's holy things, they are to bring to the Lord as a penalty a ram from the flock, one without defect and of the proper value in silver according to the sanctuary shekel. It's a guilt offering. They must make restitution for what they fail to do in regard to the holy things, pay an additional penalty of a fifth of its value and give it all to the priest. The priest will make atonement for them with the ram as a guilt offering, and they will be forgiven. If anyone sins and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, even though they don't know it, they're guilty and will be held responsible. They're to bring to the priest as a guilt offering a ram from the flock, one without defect and of the proper value. In this way, the priest will make atonement for them for the wrong they've committed unintentionally, and they will be forgiven. It's a guilt offering. They've been guilty of wrongdoing against the Lord. Okay, so let's get saved. That's the end of our beginning of Leviticus. Tomorrow we'll pick it up at Leviticus 6. But in the meantime, come out of the world, okay? You'll still be in it, but you won't be of it because you'll belong to another kingdom through the declaration that I'm going to have you speak. So if you're ready to have a nicer uh, king, Jesus Christ, and to come into a softer, gentler world, uh, at least in terms of the very uh, existence of being a Christian, is certainly lovely um, on the inside. You know, the peace that you feel is a river, okay? So I'm inviting you now to make that declaration. That's all it takes is a declaration, okay? The world won't do it because it's proud, all right? But I want you to do it, all right? Please do it. That's my advice, do it, okay? So repeat after me. Father, I admit I'm a sinner. I thank you for your sacrifice of your very self on the cross to atone for my sin. I invite you to come into my heart and dine with me on your word. Live with me and be my friend and be my savior. I thank you for the gift of eternal life that you're giving me now so that when I pass out of this world, I walk right into your kingdom for eternity, a better place. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you said that, you're saved. It's that simple. Welcome to the kingdom. There's probably two billion of us here, okay? It's not the whole world, it's just a part of it, all right? But there's enough of us. You have one job because there is responsibility. As I said earlier, you have a responsibility when you're saved, but it's not to do things you can't do or don't have the power to do, like cure yourself of sin or stop sinning instantly, okay? 
the one job you have is to keep coming back and listening to the Word of God because the Word is God. That's what Genesis tells us. The Word is God. So when you're listening to the words, it's washing you up. It's doing for you what you've never been able to do. You're going to have to trust me on that. You're not going to lose yourself, but you'll become a new creature because you're going to get washed and washed and washed. Okay? But don't run out there and say, well, oh, I can never sin. You know, you just don't have any power over that. I mean, yes, you can choose to, you know, not shoot drugs today. Okay? But I'm talking about the little sins. I mean, we all sin. Okay? The big sins that you've never been able to beat, give them to the Lord. Okay? Commit them to him and he will take care of them. But your one responsibility is to keep coming back and getting under this word and let it rain on you. Because it will wash you. I promise. Okay, that's all you have to worry about right now. Don't worry about anything else. You've come as you are, just like we all do. Now just sit and be still and know that he is God. Okay, I'll be back on Monday. Uh, I love you very much, all of you, and I will see you then. I'm going to try to upload this to Facebook, but if not, I'll put the uh, YouTube one there. And when you get on YouTube, you're going to have to tap it until you see the little square box in the bottom right that will allow you to expand it. Or I have on my feed, I have my, um, it's Autumn Isles at Bread of Life 7535. So if you go to YouTube and you type that in, you'll go right to YouTube and you'll get it directly from YouTube and you will uh, see it in its normal form. Perhaps Facebook will stop harassing and I won't see a weird wonky video go up. We'll see, I'll keep trying, okay? But there's gonna be a myriad of places that you can see this, okay? So no excuse, keep coming back. I love you very much. God bless you. Good night.